What's happening guys? It's Nick from S2 Strategic Defense. Hope all is well. You guys are hanging out in the garage today while I get some dry fire training done in and around the vehicle. And I thought that this is a good opportunity to make a quick video for you guys and share a dry fire training tip that maybe you guys can find useful. I know dry fire training, everybody knows the benefits of this, but not a lot of people spend a lot of time, mostly because it's kind of boring, unless you have something like a Mantis or something like that. But even if you don't have a Mantis, there's plenty of things that you guys can do for dry fire training. It's important. It should be to 70 to 80% of your training time. We already know that mostly because it allows us to do things that a flat range often doesn't allow us to do. So I thought I'd share a tip with you guys today in dry fire training that I actually learned from Don Gula and Gary Drake when I was doing my cert pistol instructors course at a law enforcement instructors uh, conference a couple years ago. Now, if you guys don't know who Gary Drake and Don Gula are, make sure you guys find them online. They're amazing instructors, tons of information. Anyways, for today's training, you're gonna need a few different things. First thing you'll need is any kind of a target. Now you see I have an IDPA style target taped to the wall, nothing that spectacular. Uh, you guys can use any kind of target that you have, hostage taking or any combination or whatever you guys want, make sure you guys have some kind of target. Then you'll see that I have these styrofoam cups taped to the wall or taped to the target, one in the center mass, one in the uh, ocular cavity, right? Center mass, obviously, that's our primary type of target, and if we need to take a precision shot, then we move into that brain box zone. So that's what we have going on, and again, you could set this up however you guys want to, one target, three targets, 10 targets, it doesn't make a difference, okay? That's up to you, that's the creativity part. I use these styrofoam cups with the lid still on it, and then the other thing that you're gonna need is some kind of a laser-based training system. Whether you're using one of those inserts that you put into your gun, every time you push the trigger, it'll emit a laser beam, or if you're using a dedicated dry fire pistol like I am, a cert pistol, which puts out a laser on its own. So what does this allow us to do? First, let me talk about the problem. A lot of times when we do dry fire training, it becomes precision work, right? Aim small, miss small. So we're looking for that perfect sight package, we're looking for that perfect trigger press, we're working everything spot on. And that's great for marksmanship development. However, for the people who are interested in concealed carry and defensive pistol use, you need to start incorporating other things like movement, compromised elevations and, and positions, uh, support side only, strong side only, running your low light situation so you got a handheld light or maybe a, a pistol mounted light and you're working that while you're working the gun. Those are things that you have to work on all of the time in dry fire practice. And so having this kind of configuration helps us develop more speed and combat effectiveness rather than that precision work. Now here's a caveat to this. I'm gonna have to go dark here for a quick second and turn all the lights off or else you're not gonna be able to see uh, what happens with these things when we use a laser and the styrofoam cups. Be advised, this works just fine. You'll see it in broad daylight, but the camera won't pick it up. So I wanna make sure that you guys see exactly what's happening. So bear with me for a second. I'm gonna do go dark and I'll, you guys can get a chance to see what happens with these styrofoam cups. Stand by. I'm gonna use my cert pistol and I'm gonna get on target with these styrofoam cups. The camera has not moved, the target has not moved, nothing's changed except for the lights. And you're gonna see how those cups light up, okay? I'm gonna start with that one that's in the center mass thoracic region, and you'll watch that laser go up, 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 and into the ocular cavity. Let's go back down, back in here, up, down. We can start working a bunch of different types of uh, Mozambique drills and that kind of stuff based on that, something that's based on speed. If you guys are running a light, you can get your light out and still work one-handed with those types of uh, targets, right? They light up pretty fast and go from there. So you can see what happens every time a laser gets into that cup, goes through that uh, uh, cover, and then back and reflects around inside of that styrofoam cup. All right, guys, so that's pretty cool, right? So we can use some kind of a laser-based training system, use these styrofoam cups with the lid still on it, Use whatever targets you guys have, right? You, whether they're IDPA or you know they're the paper ones or whatever you guys have, steel. Get those out and about. 
start using some kind of a laser-based training system, put these styrofoam cups on it, and start moving around and start working that gun, drive that pistol, drive the sights, make sure you guys are doing different types of stuff, running the light, you know, single-handed, support-handed, you, you know, from laying down, from under the car, whichever you guys want to do, you can work those different combinations. But the bigger idea is that you're training in a bunch of different types of environments, with movement, with dynamics, those are more important than just having pure out precision. You have to be able to have some types of marksmanship for sure, but you also need to have the dynamics of it, which is why we talk about combat effectiveness, not necessarily precision type of shooting, right? Anywhere in this center mass is gonna be an effective hit. Anywhere in that ocular region is gonna be an effective hit, rather than being able to zone in. And so what I want you guys to do is start getting away from pure precision work. Still do it, you still need it but I want you to start developing dynamics and speed into your dry fire training. And this is a great way to do that in and around vehicles like I'm doing. I probably got about 20 of these types of targets kind of set up. Sometimes I'll set them up around the house, clear the house, sweep the house, those kinds of things. Have some fun with it and be creative with however you guys want to train your dry fire. All right, guys, hopefully that helps. I'll see you guys on the next video.